Right, I'm not really sure where to start with today's video, to be honest. On Wednesday, I announced that I was going to be fitting a DID gold chain from Wiimoto on the Triumph T120. Now this video was actually filmed at the beginning of this week and it was intended to upload it as Wednesday's videos but things didn't go according to plan. Now I'd like to make it clear that there's nothing wrong with the DID chain, it is perfect and it is exactly as it should be. There was also no problem with the service that I received from Wiimoto, that was exemplary as usual. Now as it stands, the T120 is not safe to ride because I was unable to rivet and secure the chain as it should be. I could quite easily have fluffed this video because the footage that I'd taken, I could have given the impression that everything had gone as it should have gone and that everything was completed properly and make myself look really good. I know a lot of YouTubers do do that I've watched it happen but I'm not stupid and neither of you and it's obvious when someone is telling you that they've achieved one outcome but the pictures that you're seeing quite clearly show that they haven't done anything of the sort. To me that's dishonest and my conscience will allow me to do that. The problem relates to the chain removal and riveting tool that I was using and specifically the retailer that sold it to me. Now I've always vowed that I won't do this type of video but to be quite honest I've found this to be such an extreme experience that I thought it was only right really that I do bring this to your attention. I also didn't want to include it with the chain fitting video because that would put a cloud over DID and Wiimoto and they don't deserve that. Now I would like to apologise to viewers that might find this video boring but this experience of mine does relate to a lot of questions that I get from viewers who also experience similar problems with products and I find it quite obvious that people don't understand that as retail customers they do actually have statutory rights. So today I'm going to tackle it and get it out of the way in the background so that you're not staring at a blank screen I'm just going to play some of the unedited footage that I took on Monday for the chain fitting video. The full chain fitting video will hopefully, fingers crossed, go up next Wednesday or Friday. I've got something in the pipeline to get this sorted out, so fingers crossed it is going to work out okay. Now, here in the UK, we had this strange situation up until 2015 where we had the Sale of Goods Act and the Supply of Goods and Services Act, two completely separate acts which dealt with the same subject and that was the statutory rights of a retail customer. It was confusing, difficult to interpret and difficult to understand and retailers were taking advantage of that and to put it simply were riding roughshod over retail customers. They were using their ignorance against them for their advantage. So in 2015, the UK government decided to scrap those two laws and bring out a new law which ran along the lines of the European Union legislation relating to these sort of issues. And that's the 2015 Consumer Rights Act. Now obviously this is not an international law. This only applies to the UK. I suspect that a lot of the principles do apply to other developed countries, but I would urge you, whichever country you live in, to find out what your statutory rights are. I suspect they will be similar and run along similar lines, but they will not be the same. Now, I do have some very basic legal qualifications, but they're very old. The law is constantly changing and evolving, and. I'm pretty sure that the principles of those qualifications are way out of date now. What I'm trying to say is I am in no way a legal advisor. What I'm trying to do with this video is just give you a heads up that you do have rights and things are not always the way that a retailer tells you they are. Now, for those of you here in the UK, we have the Trading Standards Office. Now, they have a helpline which is run by the Citizens Advice Bureau where they do have qualified advisors that will listen to a complaint that you have and they will give you good, solid advice as to what your statutory rights are 
and how you should deal with it. There's usually no need to turn to the services of a solicitor. These people are seriously good and I have found them invaluable in the past. So what I'm going to talk about today is just the barest nuts and bolts of how this act affects you here in the UK and basically how to smell a rat if a retailer is trying to pull the wool over your eyes when you have a problem with a product that he has sold you. Now first of all, and again remember I'm talking about UK law here, forget the manufacturer's warranty. When you have a problem or a defect with a product that you've bought, the manufacturer's warranty is completely irrelevant. The manufacturer's warranty is in fact just the icing on the cake. It's an addition to what your statutory rights are. And if you read any warranty card that you'll get with any product, somewhere at the bottom in small print, it will say something along the lines of, this does not affect your statutory rights. And that's because a manufacturer's warranty does not override the Consumer Rights Act in any way. But retailers will often use this as a red herring. Now, when you buy a product from a retailer, for the purposes of this act, the contract of sale is between you and the retailer, not between you and the manufacturer. And depending on the category of that item that you've bought, you're protected by those statutory rights for up to six years. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to consumable products. But it does include things like motor vehicles, tools, electronics, that kind of thing. The Act says that that product must be fit for the purpose for which it was sold for up to a period of six years. So that one year manufacturer's warranty really is worthless. Now, when you first purchase an item, the law now gives you the facility to return that item back to the retailer for any reason within 30 days, providing it's in the same condition it was when you bought it. So even if it's not defective and you just don't like the colour or it's not quite what you was expecting, within 30 days you can return that item and you're due a full refund. That is your right as a consumer. Now if within the first six months that item develops a fault, the law classifies that fault as being present at the time of sale. And the decision as to how that problem is rectified is you, the customer's decision, not the retailer's. In effect, the retailer cannot dictate to you how he is going to resolve the issue. Now, there's a little bit of a grey area in the act here. Where simple, relatively inexpensive items are concerned, where a repair isn't practical or a lasting repair can't be guaranteed, you're entitled to a replacement or a refund. Now, for more complicated, high-value items, things like motorcycles, motor cars, perhaps dishwashers, things like that, the retailer is entitled to attempt one lasting repair. But the law says that this should be done in such a way as not to cause unnecessary inconvenience to the customer. In other words, it must expedite that repair as quickly as is reasonably possible. Now, after six months, things change slightly. Your rights are still exactly the same, but it's up to you, the customer, to prove that that defect was present at the time of sale. Now, in the notes to the Act, retailers are told to take a common sense approach to this. And proving that the fault in that product is not your fault isn't really a big deal. But as I discovered with Machine Mart this week, they've latched onto this and decided to use it to their advantage. Now, Machine Mart is a big high street retailer of workshop tools and equipment available to both the trade and the retail customer. And the goods that they sell are generally generic tools and equipment made mainly in Asia and packaged under their name. I have quite literally over the years spent thousands of pounds with this company and this I have to admit is the first time I've had a problem with them. So here we go. 
Now in February this year with the Payday Project series I needed to fit a new chain to the Air Cool Triumph T100. Now sourcing a chain breaking and riveting tool for motorcycles can be a bit of a minefield. There is a lot of rubbish available online so I decided to go to a reputable company, a shop that I can walk into so that if I had any problems with the tool that I bought I could simply go back and return it without hassle. Now I would describe this tool as a lower mid-range tool in that it wasn't the cheapest on the market but it wasn't the most expensive either. Now in general I found this tool to be okay. I picked the item up, I walked over to the desk, put it on the counter and I asked the salesman are these okay, have you had any problems with them? And the reply that I got was, yeah, they're okay, we don't get many returns. Now on the box, it clearly stated the gauge and pitch of chains that it's designed to be used with. And the 525 chains that I have on the Bonneville bikes are all well within the range that's specified for this tool. I paid my money and I went away and made the T100 video. Now, unfortunately, whilst making this video, this tool failed whilst I was trying to rivet the links up at the end of the installation. Now, I didn't think it was fair to make a big deal of this and mention it in the video, so I borrowed a tool from someone else, completed the job and produced the video. A couple of days later, I contacted Machine Mart. I explained the problem that I'd had and I was told I could bring it in for a replacement or a refund, whichever I preferred, and I took it in and again I spoke to the sales staff. I was assured that this was a one-off that not had any of these kind of problems in the past. I took them at the word and I accepted a replacement. Now I don't change chains on motorbikes every day so when I got home this tool was put away and didn't see the light of day again until this week. Now to my disappointment as I carried out the procedure for this video exactly the same fault presented itself with this tool. Basically the hardened metal riveting pin hadn't been hardened correctly and instead of the pin riveting the chain, the chain itself was riveting the pin, rendering the tool useless. Now I quickly had to rehash the schedule for videos for this week and then I did a bit of research online and found a wealth of evidence that suggested that I wasn't the only person that had had this problem. There were in fact several pages of reviews on various websites of people complaining about this happening. Now strangely these reviews weren't there when I'd originally purchased this tool it would appear that they all sort of cropped up round about the period that I'd bought it. Now armed with this knowledge it was obvious to me that this was a common fault in the tool and that it wasn't my fault. So once again I contacted Machine Mart and asked to be put through to their customer care department. Now I was transferred through to another number and it wasn't until 15 minutes into the conversation that both myself and the person that I was speaking to realised that I hadn't been put through to the customer care department and I was actually talking to a chap in their Nottingham branch of Machine Mart. However, he did confide in me that at the beginning of this year there had been a faulty batch of these tools produced which had caused some problems of the type that I was describing. He told me that as far as he was aware these had all been recalled and returned back to the manufacturer and that the problem had now been rectified with this kit and he put me through to the customer care department in order for me to ensure that this kit had been rectified and to explain the problems that I'd had. Now this is where the fun began. I explained to the lady on the phone the position that I was in, that I was in the process of making a video. I was a bit stuck. I needed to get the tool replaced that day, being Wednesday, to finish the fitting off so that I could produce the video for Friday. And that as it stood, I had a bike which was unridable. I explained to her about the internet reviews that I'd researched and that it was a common fault. I also explained to her that the chap I'd previously just spoken to on the phone had confirmed this. 
but she wasn't having any of it. She told me that it was company policy at Machine Mart that as the item was over six months old, I would have to return it to them for it to be sent to their technical department for assessment to decide whether or not they were going to replace it or give me a refund. And she explained that this would take up to 30 days. Now, I explained to her that that wasn't really very convenient for me because as it stood, my bike was out of service because this tool hadn't done its job properly. She made it quite clear that she couldn't care or less. And it was only when I asked her what section of the Consumer Rights Act 2015 entitled Machine Mat to do that, that she suddenly stopped what she was saying and said that she would put me through to a manager. Now, the manager that I spoke to was much more understanding. He apologised for the lady's behaviour and apologised for the upset and inconvenience that had been caused to me. Now, this is where it gets interesting because there are provisions under this Act for a consumer to be paid compensation for what is known as consequential loss. Now this can be anything from a product causing damage to property, i.e. a toaster exploding and burning a house down in an extreme case, or simply remuneration for travelling expenses through having to travel excessively to get items exchanged or rectified. And not surprisingly, retailers don't like this part of the act. Now this chap was unable to confirm whether or not this common fault had been rectified with this kit, but he did intimate to me that he may be able to replace the tool with an upgraded tool in order to compensate me for the hassle and trouble that I'd had, which I think under the circumstances was only reasonable. Now he did make mention of a particular chain breaking and riveting tool which was substantially more expensive than the one I actually had purchased. He didn't promise me that they would replace it with that one but he did intimate that this might be possible. What he said he would do is he would contact the manager of my local Hull store, sort it out with him and leave instructions that they had to make sure that I was happy when I left the store and that I would be along shortly. Relieved that this problem seemed to be coming to an end, I jumped on the bobber, went down to Machine Martin Hull, walked up to a guy at the counter who told me that he was the manager and that I must be Stuart. Now, he had quite a cocky attitude from the outset. I handed over the tool to him and he examined it and he said, yeah, we get this all the time because these tools are crap. He then went on to say he wasn't prepared to give me another one of the same tool because they're all crap. Now I was a bit dismayed by this attitude and statement so I reiterated the conversation that I had with the manager at the customer care department stating to him that at the end of the day I'd paid money and that we'd gone into a contract where they'd agreed to supply me with a chain breaking and riveting tool that would break chains and rivet them. He agreed that he had spoken with this other manager from the customer care department and he admitted that the manager from the customer care department has suggested that I should be upgraded to a better quality tool to ensure that I didn't have any more problems. And he went on to tell me that unfortunately the manager at the customer care department wasn't really in full possession of all the facts and that in actual fact all the chain breakers and riveters that machine might sell are crap. None of them work. It's exact words to me where it doesn't matter if I give you a £20 chain breaker and riveter or a £100 chain breaker or riveter, it'll break the first time you use it. He further went on to tell me that all of them were only designed to break and rivet cheap Chinese chains and that there were no good on quality chains. Now, I did explain to the guy that I was in a jam and I needed to get this chain fixed that day. It was urgent. And even when I indicated to him that notwithstanding what he had just told me, I would be prepared to at least take the risk and try and get my chain sorted out and take a chain breaker and riveter with me to try and facilitate that job. But he then told me that he didn't have any more chain breakers in stock. Now, I knew straight away what this guy was doing. He was manipulating me into a position where I had to accept a refund. He didn't really want to fulfil his statutory obligations to the contract that we had. He just wanted to take the cheapest route that he possibly could out of this contract 
without fulfilling his legal obligations. And to be quite honest, after the week that I'd had, the hassle that I'd had that day and the amount of time and energy that I'd wasted on this, I decided that rather than kicking up a fuss and standing my ground, I would take the refund and instead I would deal with a reputable company. Now at the end of the day, this company seems to me to have exhibited some quite extreme and extraordinary behaviour in order to wriggle out of their obligations to what at the end of the day was only a petty problem. But it does demonstrate the lengths that some of these companies will go to. My advice is get to know what your basic rights are if you don't already know what they are. Don't put up with this kind of treatment. If in the future, you have a problem with a product that you've bought and you're not getting the service that you require to get it rectified from the retailer, get in touch with the Trading Standards Office. They will help you out. Now, I'm really sorry that I've waffled on about such a dry subject for such a long time. I'm going to end it here. Once again, thanks for watching. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I will leave a link for the Trading Standards Office in the video description down below. I will be back again next week, hopefully with that chain fitting video. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.